Hi everyone, I'm the Nature Guy and I'm here at Camp Asable, just behind the Nature Center. We got lots of beautiful trees and right now the little breeze is blowing through. It sounds really great. But I want to talk to you today about how trees breathe. Well, first of all, what do they breathe? Well, we breathe in oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide. Well, it turns out trees and all the other green plants in the world do exactly the opposite. They breathe in carbon dioxide and give off oxygen. It's a good thing they do that, otherwise we'd run out of oxygen as animals pretty quickly. So the question is, how does that carbon dioxide get in and the oxygen get out? Um, and that has to do with the leaves. So I'm going to go over here, pick one of these maple leaves, and see what we've got. Well, on the back of leaves, you're probably familiar with this, we see a pattern of interesting sort of channels. We, we call those veins that travel throughout uh, the parts of the leaf. So the leaf that's green, uh, that's the part that does the photosynthesis. Um, that's the process where the sun's energy is used to make sugar for the plant and it needs carbon dioxide to do that. And the byproduct is the oxygen of that chemical reaction. Uh, so uh, the veins are important, but it's something that you can't see with the naked eye. We're going to have to get under a microscope and look at. Um, and that's the little nostrils, as it were, of the leaf called stomata. These stomata are little round things that are almost, almost look like little donuts, miniature donuts. But they can open and close um, as the plant needs to either bring in carbon dioxide or release oxygen. Now, the other thing that can go in and out of the hole is, is water. And... and uh, it doesn't want to lose water vapor too much, so they open and close accordingly uh, as the tree needs it. But all those stomata allow um, the gases to get in or out of the leaf. And then when the, uh, uh, the, the leaf gets that uh, material it needs and the sunlight and it makes sugar, well, that can be transported down the veins, into the stems, and even down the whole trunk of the tree. Uh, now, of course, getting air into a leaf, that's pretty clear, but how do you get air into the trunk of a big tree? Well, that's a different story. Uh, in the bark of the tree, we have what we call lenticels. Uh, let's go look at a couple of different species of tree and see if we can see that. So we're going over here to this, uh, this birch tree. That's uh, one of the easiest ones uh, to notice the lenticels. Here the lenticels are, are uh, um, horizontal. And they look, they look like little stripes, but that's actually openings through the bark that uh, the gases, either carbon dioxide or oxygen, uh, can travel through. Uh, not all trees have horizontal lenticels. Uh, some have uh, little round oval shaped lenticels like on this balsam fir. And you can see all the way along the trunk of the tree, we've got all these lenticels. And different trees have different shaped ones. Well, here's a here's a cherry, a black cherry. It also has those little horizontal lenticels that show up. And it gives the bark some of its character. So even the the thick part of the tree, the, the trunk of the tree, uh, can breathe in carbon dioxide and give off oxygen as part of the process of how the forest works. So I'm really glad that trees can breathe. We need their oxygen, they need our carbon dioxide. I guess God really knew what he was doing when he built our forests. Let's learn to take care of them even better. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.